that I'm 60 and I have to wear glasses. So you're probably going to be seeing a lot more of me in glasses, at least if I want to read your comments. Welcome to Chef AJ Live. Before I interview the fabulous guests we have today, I just want to let you know that tomorrow at 11 a.m. we do have a medical doctor, Dr. Jessica Krant from Manhattan. She is a board certified dermatologist. Whenever we have a doctor on, there's so many questions. So you know for preferential treatment, you've got to email them to us. If you're on our mailing list, I'll post the link how you can be on it. You just reply to the email saying who the guest is. If you're not, you can always contact us through our website, Chef AJ website. Well, today's guest reached out to me when she was watching her friend, Kim Campbell, do a live cooking demo. I was not familiar with her before, but I am now. She has an absolutely wonderful YouTube channel called Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. It's wonderful. I'm telling you, if you if you need recipes, it's, it's just a beautiful channel. The recipes are healthy, they're delicious, and she does such a great job. And I'm meeting her for the first time today, as maybe some of you are. Please welcome well, before I say her name, I'm going to tell you what she's making to so make sure you stay tuned in because they sound <laughs> fabulous, especially the lentil bread. I mean, not that the mock tuna isn't going to be fabulous. I'm sure it is, but I have never seen anybody make lentil bread. So I'm really excited. Please welcome Jill Dalton. Thanks for coming, Jill. Thank you for having me, AJ. This is so exciting. This is only my second live type of interview like this, uh, especially cooking that I've done. So this is all new for me and kind of fun and exciting. <laughs> Well, you look and great. I hate to disappoint you, the, the lentil bread, I, I'm, I'm just going to be putting this stuff on. I'm not going to show you how to make them, but I can tell you how I made them because it's I, so ridiculously easy. Well, I would appreciate that. That's great. And, and plus you gave the recipes and I posted in right. the There box. is a show. So, so they can go to that and watch that actually. Exactly. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah. yeah. So should we just get into it? Absolutely. Are you ready? Okay. So we're just going to start with the mock tuna. And because I used to be a huge tuna lover, I grew up, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So my mom bought a lot of canned tuna. So we, we had a lot of canned tuna in my life. And I still, you know, all up into my adult life, I still loved it. And then five years ago, we went plant-based and I knew I had to have a replacement for that. And, but mind you, this does not have Miracle Whip, which I w used to use. Um, this is all gonna be plant-based, super healthy, low calorie, so we're just gonna get started. And I have uh, a 28 ounce uh, can of garbanzo beans. So you could use two of the smaller cans. These are no salt added. A lot of our recipes tend to be a little bit lower on the salt. Uh, it's not no salt because the, the mustard we're using is Dijon mustard and it's, you know, mustards are really high in salt. So that will get our salt covered right there. And then we're using other things that, uh, that have like the pickles, you know, there's a brine in it that's really salty. So you'll get that tang from the salt. Uh, so we're just gonna put the chickpeas in our bowl and you gotta have a little bit, you know, a little bit larger mixing bowl like this because we are gonna chop them up a little bit. Um, you can use, I have a little pastry cutter here, which I don't really make pastry anymore, but it still is really handy for stuff like this. Uh, but you could use a potato masher or just a fork. You know, you just wanna get probably about half of them chopped up because you know, if you put them on a piece of bread or whatever you're putting it on, those little chickpeas are just gonna roll off and fall off on your plate. So you kind of want them chopped up a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna basically chop these up a little bit, mash them. You don't want them totally mashed because you don't want your, your uh, tuna to turn into a spread. <laughs> tuna soup. Yeah, right, <laughs> like peanut butter or something. Velma, the recipe is not posted in its entirety, but the link to the recipes, guys, are posted in the description. So if you don't see them now, very soon after the broadcast ends, it will stay on YouTube and it will be in the chat box, I promise, because I posted it myself. We have some fans on, just so you know, Laurel is watching and she says, I watch her YouTube channel. All of her recipes are oh, always yay. delicious. And Carol says that lentil bread is fantastic. Isn't it though? I, I'm so, I'm so pleased with that. We, we eat so much of it and it's so, I'll talk about that in a minute and how it's so diverse and, and able to be used for so many different things, but literally two ingredients, my mind was blown and it works and it's simple and it's, and it's stuff that you, you probably still have on hand, you know, that we're stuck inside or you can't get stuff from the grocery store. This is something, it's just one ingredient that most people well, might have it still in their cupboards, hopefully. <laughs> but you can still order it online. We got ours online. Uh, we just buy these huge, it's a four pound bag um, just from Amazon because we go through a lot of it. 
because Whole, Food, Whole Foods has been out. Our other grocery store has been out of them also. All right, so you can kind of see, it's just kind of a rough chop to our chickpeas. Now we're gonna make the sauce that's gonna go on it. Okay, so I'm using tahini and we're gonna use two tablespoons. And I realize tahini isn't super low fat, but you need something to replace the mayonnaise element in this tuna. And this is gonna make it kind of, it's gonna give it that really rich flavor. So two tablespoons. And I use a tahini that is literally just sesame seeds and a little bit of sea salt. You need to check your labels carefully because a lot of stuff like that, nut butters, anything like, you know, peanut butters, you need to check that label because usually, and if it says spread or easy stir, that there's all kinds of other ingredients added to that that you don't need to be eating. You really want it to just be the nut or the seed just ground up and maybe have a, a little bit of salt in there. Stephanie says, I have made her lentil bread many times and I love it. Dina says she loves mock tuna. It was the hardest thing for her to give up as she grew up eating tuna most Absolutely. of her life. And Susanna, the name of her YouTube channel is Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Again, if you don't see it in the show notes here, you just might have to click around, but I promise those, those all will be in YouTube as soon as this broadcast is over. Great, thank you. Now I'm putting in the Dijon. I like to use Dijon just because it's a really strong flavored mustard but you can use any kind of mustard that you like. I actually like the really, the, the ground, the grainy kind where it's just the mustard seeds ground up. But my family's a little bit more, you know, they like the flavor of this better. The ground ones are a little too spicy for them. So I'm gonna go with the Dijon. So it's two tablespoons of Dijon. And then we're gonna do the juice of two lemons. Jane says that you got her onto Carrot Dog. She loves your channel. Ah. A lot of people think you're fabulous. Carol says, what do you think about using Veganaise? You know, it's interesting, Jill, that you mentioned Miracle Whip because growing up, we never had mayonnaise. It was always Miracle Whip. Yeah, we never had mayonnaise either. We were a strictly Miracle Whip family. Yeah, and I guess, which must have come from my dad because my grandma uses mayonnaise, my mom's mom. But then, you know, all of our life, it's only been Miracle Whip. So that must have been my dad's influence. And then, you know, of course, we, we tried mayonnaise later in our life. And I was like, no, there's nothing like Miracle Whip. So about the veganaise. Um, our show is oil-free. So, and there's a great video by Dr. Clapper that explains the importance of really not using added oils. Uh, because they're so high in fat and it's really an empty food. It's not a whole food. So you don't really don't need to be using all of that oil. I mean, as much as I love the flavor of veganase too, but really making something to replace the mayonnaise with, like what I'm making here, once you taste it, you're going to fall in love with it. And once your taste buds start to change a little bit and adjust to this way of eating, you won't even think about veganase at all. And when you have it again, you'll realize how you feel and how it, it coats your mouth. And yeah, oils are just, now I can really taste it. If I have something that's got a lot of oil in it, I can just taste it. Yeah. And it just tastes, I'm so turned off by I it. Know, and I get sick from it now. It's been yeah, so long. I, feel I, mean, I literally get a stomach ache and sometimes even vomit. Lori says, oh, sesame wow. contains a lot of oil. Do you pour out the oil of the tahini when it settles? I do. I do. You know, when like peanut butter, you know, there's always that, Right when I take that lid off or the seal, I pour all that oil off. Um, but the rest of it, I feel like it, the oils from here is okay because it's just the nut ground up or the seed ground up. So that's all part of the whole food. So, but it's, it's the problem is when you extract that oil out by itself and none of the whole food it comes from is actually there anymore. So, okay, so there we go. We just have a, a Nice little creamy sauce there. I just whisked the tahini and the, the mustard and the lemon juice together. We're going to pour that in the bowl. And then what I have here on my cutting board, lemons out of here. I've got one stalk of celery that's diced up really small, a half a cup, or I'm sorry, a fourth of a cup of diced onion, which I'm going to dice that a little bit smaller. I like the big chunks of onion, but my family sure don't. They're like, why don't you cut those smaller? And then I have two tablespoons of dill pickle that I just diced up. 
And that's really whatever dill pickles you have. I mean, right now, you gotta do what you gotta do. You might, you probably have a jar of them sitting back in your refrigerator that barely get used. It's just for flavor really. And you're not using that much of it. So just that dill flavor is excellent. And then what I have here, I know the recipe that you're gonna print out says date, one date, um, because I used to mix the sauce together in a blender, but instead of using a blender and dirtying up any other dishes, I like to just use, just stirring it. I have about two tablespoons of chopped up raisins. It's just a little something sweet. So you've got your salty, you've got your bitter, you've got your uh, vinegary taste, and then you need just something a little bit sweet. So That's we're gonna nice. add all of that in there. Where do you live, Jill? We are in North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh, towards Cary, North Carolina. Why is everybody in North Carolina? Kathy Hester, you, Howard Jacobson, the camera. All right. Yeah, we're all here. That's not really it's fair beautiful. that you have all these wonderful plant-based uh, people all in one place. You got to spread They're yourself smart. out a little bit. They're smart. It's a beautiful place. It's very green and lush, and the weather all year is really nice. We don't get we hardly get any snow and the winter is sunny. We out, we can walk year round, really. It doesn't get that cold. The, the summers are a little hot, they're a little humid, but I, I think we're still pretty much in the middle compared to a lot of other places. And now Dr. Garth Davis lives near you. So you guys- Oh, got, he does. got a lot of vegan- Wow, blood. yeah, we got them all. I wow. know, so fair. Say, so have you always been good in the kitchen and making recipes? No. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Cause uh, I know Kim knows this, but I don't usually share this with many people that I don't really enjoy cooking that much. I never have. And I grew up in a family, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money when we were young or in my mom's family. So her cooking was very basic and it contained a lot of ground hamburger, really, really cheap hamburger. Cause it was cheap. So I didn't have a very large repertoire of food recipes and I really wasn't a food addict yet because, you know, when you eat really simply like that, you don't really get attached to a whole lot of things. And we never had, you know, we never had sweets or, or even chips, pop, anything like that. We just couldn't afford that kind of stuff, which in the long run really did me well. You know, I didn't become attached to that kind of stuff at an early age. Um, but yeah, when I, when I moved out on my own, I didn't have very many re recipes on hand. And then, you know, as the years went by or years went on, you know, we just, both my husband and I just slowly started gaining more and more weight as you do eating just a standard American diet. And it wasn't until about, well, it's been over five years now that we discovered the plant-based diet and it just really changed our life. And that's when I really learned how to cook because I knew I, we needed to figure out the uh, recipes to, to replace all those foods that we love to eat before. So we just took one at a time and started making all the foods we love, but making plant-based versions. And we learned how to make them taste delicious. So yeah, I've only <laughs> really been cooking for real, probably the last five or six years. That's fantastic. And what influenced you guys to adopt a whole food plant-based diet? Um, well, it, you know, it was our health, our health, you know, I, I started having health, our heart palpitations, and I just wasn't feeling well, I was achy all the time. I just turned 40, and I was feeling way older than 40. Um, and we read the book Eat to Live by Joel Furman. And it just blew our mind. And we started doing it right away. We just hopped in and we lost weight, just it just the weight just fell off of us, really, we didn't have to try that hard. And then it, we, it, it just opened our minds and then we were just hooked from then on. So, so there's, your, there's your salad. It's, it's pretty much done. It's super simple, super easy. So we're just gonna, oh, I forgot. I forgot. I, to make um, up for the, the tuna flavor, right? You can get these things called dulse flakes and that will give you that little, um, it's, it's a seaweed. So we like to sprinkle just a little bit of that on there and it kind of gives it a little bit of that fish flavor. And then I like to use cracked pepper. And that's your preference, how much you put on there. It's probably half teaspoon maybe. And then you just mix that in there. Laurel asks if 
Uh, wondering if you could use grapes instead of raisins. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, those would taste fantastic. It's just that little bit of sweet and all that juice in there. Those, those would be great. Cool. Gosh, I might have to start adding those. That sounds good. Lori says we have a few experts in this neck of the woods. Does North Carolina have a blue zone? <laughs> because you got all those consolidated plant-based eaters there. No, I, I think North Carolina's, you know, it's, it's still the South. So there's a lot of Chick-fil-A, there's Biscuitville, you know, all the typical Southern barbecue kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't tend to be a very healthy crowd, you know, all that Southern uh -huh. cooking, all that butter and barbecue. That's so yeah. Stephanie wants to know, do you have a team or family that helps produce your content or do you do it all yourself? Uh, it's just my husband and I, um, he does all the web stuff because he, he's, uh, he used to have a web development business so he does all of the editing and the you know all the the website stuff that's all him but as far as far, as far as creating recipes and that kind of stuff we all do we all kind of take turns my two girls now are 21 and, and 19 um, they both love to create recipes so it's kind of a cumulative group of recipes and we have different tastes you know we have three chocoholics and one fruitaholic <laughs> That's nice. So, do, you have a, do you have a book? I don't yet. We, it's in the works, actually. There's a cookbook coming. It's supposed to come out in the fall, but you know, with what's going on, we really don't know. So hopefully it's hey, still well, on. When it comes it's out, come back on. on and we'll, when, it come, when it comes out, come oh, back on sure. and we'll, we'll promote it. And Jane says she loves your cauliflower, creamy cauliflower soup with wild rice. So I posted a link to that. Oh, yeah, and Gisela said she loves your series of salad dressings and they're all delish. All right. Yay. Yeah. The salad dressings are a big hit. Yeah. Once you learn how to make your salad dressings, you don't, you don't have to go down that aisle anymore. There's not worth buying salad dressing for yeah. sure. And Lana, she's okay. not going to be making the lentil bread, but she's going to talk about how to make it. And apparently it's really easy and has only two. Right. I should have set that up. I didn't even think about setting that up, but I was like, well, the thing kind of, uh, my well, griddle. If you, if you have time, you can do it now because you got this one done quickly. Uh, uh, Rosemary uh, says, do you have a substitute recipe for North Carolina chop barbecue? I don't. Well, I have one. I have one of my older recipes that was barbecue tofu baked beans and onion cucumber salad. So there's a show. If you look, if you do a search on our YouTube channel, um, there's one there. So there is some barbecue tofu in there, but I haven't done a whole lot of barbecue, maybe just barbecue beans. Yeah. I might have to throw that in my idealist to come up with something. So I just wanted to give you a little um, rundown of our, our channel too. Um, right now, we are a fully member-supported show, which is wonderful. That's a first for us, um, so that we can make our show free to the public. All of our recipes, all of our content is by members signing up, and uh, our lowest level is $5 a month, and you get all of our content, and it, it's a separate uh, membership uh, platform, so there's you have more access to us, and we put extra cut content on that site for our members but that allows our show and everything to stay free for the public and that we we upload a new recipe every single week we have been for over five years um and we have if you want to check out our website that's where all of our recipes are there's over there's probably 200 recipes by now and that's where we have our course we have a 28-day course for going plant-based and um, there's uh, meal plans, shopping guides, that kind of stuff. That's all on our website if you want to check that out. I'll post a link to it. Great. Thank you. Of course. So, you know, yeah, have, go, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say that this might be a difficult question to answer. And I get this sometimes with clients that have severe allergies. It's not a common allergy, but Gwen says she is allergic to legumes, all of them. So would you have oh, an idea? For what does, yeah. So what, what could we make tuna with that has using all your other same ideas instead of chickpeas. Oh, wow. Oh, you can think about it. One. If anybody Maybe wants to do, have... you could do, I have, it's almost identical to this. I have a roasted potato salad that is almost identical. All the ingredients are pretty much the same, uh, except for I, I, I dice my potatoes up really in the really small little cubes and I bake them for about a half an hour to get them 
all the surface is really dry. You could use that, just diced up really small potatoes. That would be delicious. And then just chop it up the same way. Just you lightly chop it. That would work wonderfully. That's great. So, so yeah, have... now we're, we're on to the, the lentil. See these little flatbreads. So these are so versatile. And I wish I could show you, but the, the process is that you have to soak the lentils in water for three hours before. And I, I didn't do that. We'll, we'll wait. Um, I got nothing to do. We'll wait. <laughs> for the three hours to put them soak? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep it. We'll just keep it on. I have to go do things, but you'll come back. No, I'm just kidding. But these are so versatile. I make them. These are, they've been in the refrigerator. So they're a little bit, a little bit stiffer. But I make them big ones like this that are a little bit thinner. And it's all a matter of just how you spread it on your griddle, how thin you spread it on your griddle. So I use these red lentils and I haven't tried it with the other lentils. I've had that question before, but my take on that is that the other lentils have a much stronger flavor. And if you don't mind that, or if you're used to eating lentils a lot, um, you could probably replace them. But my understanding about these red lentils is that they're, they're much creamier. They don't take as long to soak. They don't take as long to cook. So it's a little bit different. So I use the red lentils and I use one cup to two cups of water. So I just cover them with two cups of water and then I let them soak for three hours. And then I just blend them together. I don't, I don't pour off that soak water. There's a whole lot of debate back and forth about the, um, oh, what is it? The the inhibitor that's on a bean. And there's debate back and forth whether you should pour off that water or not. I'm starting to think that it's better to leave that water on there. I really believe that there's something in those in that phytochemical that's good for your body and that our body actually needs. And I haven't seen a benefit either way for lowering gas, like when you're cooking beans, to pour off that water. I don't see any difference. And we've tried it tons of different ways, cooking beans with the water, without the soap water, rinsing them, you know, rinsing them several times, still the same. So yeah, I just soak them, I blend them, and it's just like pancake batter. So just like you're making pancakes on your, your nonstick griddle, I have a, uh, I should probably get that, Justine, get that for me. I have a Bella um, uh, ceramic griddle, because I'm not a huge fan of nonstick cookware. I've been paranoid about that for many, many years. But actually my friend Kim from Plant Pure. Uh, hi Kim, Jeff says you're watching. So she got this Bella and I was doing a cooking demo with her. Oh, yeah. whoops, can you see? Wow, that? yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, they're actually beautiful and they're super lightweight. Um, so that the surface is ceramic. And I saw when we were doing her, her demo, it was so slick. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna look into this. And I did a little studying on it and all the reviews are great. It's more eco-safe, all that kind of stuff. It's super easy to clean. It's not heavy. It looks, it looks big and heavy, but it's very lightweight. Um, and it works like a champ for these. So great. So back to the lentil flatbreads. We have used them for so many things now. So I make them bigger. If we're gonna have a curry or if we're gonna have a stew or something like that, where you wanna have that bread for dipping, I make them a little bit bigger and they're a little more flexible. But I've always struggled with also making burgers. What do you do about the bun? It's so difficult to find vegan, gluten-free, all that good stuff buns. We were just using Ezekiel bread. And when you're having a burger, you don't wanna eat your burger on a piece of bread. <laughs> You, got, you want to have a bun. So I found that if I just pour them smaller and I just kind of mound up the, the batter, it mounds up pretty well. And they're a little bit thicker and they're super strong. They stay together really well when you make your burger. They don't fall apart like a crumbly gluten, gluten free. You know, the, typically those buns are really dry and crumbly. These are perfect. They work great. They look great. D Tina says, do you have a link for that product on your website, the grill you're showing? Yes, it's on that show for the lentil flatbreads. There'll be a link in the details um, on where to get that. Terrific. Misty um, says she has one of those. And let's see, Lola Bing says, can you make an egg substitute like just egg? 
Can you make an egg substitute like just egg? Just egg, just egg is a product you can buy. I've, I've never tried it, but I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't stores. tried it either. I, I don't really, yeah, I, I used to be, I used to love to eat eggs every single day. And I, I guess I've just learned to not eat them. And tofu scramble, I, I make every once in a while. It kind of gets me over that scrambled egg thing. But I don't really, yeah, I don't really have an egg replacer. And if I need one, I use a flax egg. But I know you can't cook that up like an egg, you know, oh. the flax meal so it doesn't work. So yeah, if I ever need an egg in a recipe, I just use a flax egg. Yeah. That's good. Kimberly says, Jill has many talents. She gardens, builds, cleans, <laughs> sings. Well, we'd love for you to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're hoping to eventually have all of that stuff on our website. You know, we're going to show more of our uh, like home projects. And, you know, I have a lot of outdoor garden things going on right now that are that are kind of fun. And I actually I usually put them up on my Instagram. I forgot I should, I should give you it's plant pure. I'm sorry. Oh, whole food plant based cooking show um, on Instagram. And I usually put up my videos of of my outdoor projects in there, just kind of informally in there. So if you want to check those out, that's kind of fun. And can you please say the name of the griddle again? People are asking. It's Bella, B-E-L-L-A, Bella. Nice. And it has a little, you know, it has a little temperature dial on the side so you can, I've only used it for the flat, the flatbread so far because we make them, we use them as our pancakes too, because they, we don't put anything in them, no salt or anything because we like to eat them sometimes as pancakes, or I like to use it as my toast in the morning. Put a little peanut butter on there in the morning. I put it put it in the toaster. They do great. That's my toast. That sounds They've been fantastic. fantastic. And, and, and they're Shannon so mild. Said, it's such a mild flavor. Yeah. Shannon says she's trying to go gluten-free, so this is a great idea. And Steph says yeah. the griddle is out of stock on Amazon. Wow. So that's, I mean, that's good, but oh, not good for you guys. But uh, there's other there's other similar... I mean, I just chose Bella. It was just the better rated one. There's several different companies that make the same, this same um, ceramic top. They even look the same, the same color. So you, you'd probably be still good going with one of them. Just read, you know, read your re reviews well. Yeah. That's cool. So you don't like to cook, but I assume you like to eat. So what, what's a day's worth of food look like for you and your family? Okay, well, we're actually on... Let me grab this. We're actually, oh, I just took the cover off. We're actually doing um, the fiber fueled 28 day plan or is it 28 days? Yeah, 28 day plan right now. So we're going from a lot of his recipes, which so far I'm really, I'm really pleased. There's only been a couple that I'm kind of like, eh. But, um, but a typical day for us would be in the morning, you know, I'll have a piece of my lentil flatbread with some peanut butter. And then I have a couple fruits, like I'll have an, a, a banana and an orange and a Brazil nut. I try to get my Brazil nut in there, you know, my once a week Brazil nut. Um, and then I always have a cup of coffee for breakfast and a big glass of water. So that's typically my breakfast. Some days I'll do oatmeal, you know, with like frozen blueberries on top, maybe some chopped pecans, something like that. Uh, chia seeds, hemp seeds. I love all the, the little seeds on top goji berries. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I, what I lean on pretty heavily. It's, it's really, I do a lot of my fruit for breakfast. So I get that, that in there. Cause I don't really eat fruit later times of the day. Um, lunch is usually leftovers of whatever we made the night before <laughs> in some fashion or a uh, salad. Cause we have a pretty, pretty large garden and I have tons and tons of kale right now, kale and bok choy and collard greens. So we just chop them up real small and make a salad of it and then add the leftovers on top of that. And so dinner typically would be some type of, we're really kind of stew people, curry type of stuff that goes over rice or over potatoes, um, like my peanut tofu sauce that uh, the African peanut sauce, that's really popular. That's one of our favorite. If you want to check out that show. It's definitely not low calorie. It's a pretty, uh, it's a heavy meal. Um, let's see, what's some of our other, we love tacos, mushroom tacos. 
we just dice up the mushrooms and maybe some tempeh, season it with all of your Mexican seasonings. So tacos is, masaman is one of our other favorite. It's a masaman curry. And that's got, let's see, that's got potatoes, carrots. I think it has, does it have cauliflower? Sometimes they have a cauliflower in there. Um, and then it has a creamy type of sauce. I love the creamy sauces. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff like that. Or chili, our chili is amazing. And everything we do, every main meal that we do, because I, I love greens and I think greens are super vital to eat as many times a day that you can. That's why we planted so much in our garden. So when, when we make a stew, I literally, I have a, a bowl probably this size or bigger. That goes in that pot. All of those greens, I just chop them up real small, put them in the pot, or we eat a big pile of it on the side that's just steamed, maybe a little uh, Bragg's liquid amino acid spritzed on it, nutritional yeast, it's all good. That sounds great. Giselle is asking, do you ever put spices into your lentil bread batter? I haven't. I haven't. I've heard a lot of people though that have that have written to me on our um, on YouTube and commented that they've tried a lot of different spices and it works wonderfully. I just like to keep them simple because we use them for so many different things, you know, and, and that you can add your flavor in other ways. But I'm I'm really yeah. I want to experiment more with it on um, different flavored flavored flatbreads. So uh, Lola Bean says that Walmart has the Bella Griddle and I just checked and I don't know if it's in stock, but they absolutely do. Yay. That's great. That's great that they have some, that's a, it's a great product. Yeah. I really, I really am pleased. Dina says, should the lentils be organic? Um, I think it's, it's really difficult right now to find organic lentils, especially these, these red lentils. Uh, a lot of them are out of stock because I, I know a lot, you know, a lot of the world eats this kind of food. So it's a lot of those brands of lentils are just out of stock right now. So I don't put the importance that much into the organics, except for like the, the, the what is it? The, uh, I'm having a brain issue here. Yeah. The dozen, the dirty dozen list. I try to stick with that list and try to only buy organic things like that, like our apples and uh, some of your fruit, all the berry fruits, definitely organic. But when it comes to beans, maybe my canned beans, I try to get organic. But um, as far as dried bean like this, I don't really, I'm not really that concerned with it. I don't worry. Do you get a lot of, like, I get these, like people, I, I, like they get so angry. Like I used a microwave for something and it's like, I get all these things, like, I can't believe you use a microwave. And I'm like, well, I've, used it for 50 years and I'm still alive. So <laughs> yeah, do you get a yeah, lot of those kind of comments? Yeah, every once in a while, uh, but I don't, it's not in our, you know, the microwaves over there. It's just yeah. built into this house. So um, we didn't used to use it very often, but now more than, you know, if we're just wanting to quickly heat something up, I'm still not a huge fan, but yeah. at the same time, you know, life is life. <laughs> yeah. You get so, busy. Uh, Robin wants to know what shells do you use for your tacos? Oh, that's a good question. Um, sometimes I make my own, you know, I have, I actually have a show on that too, corn tortillas. Um, so it's masa flour and a little bit of arrowroot. Um, but let me, let me grab them really quick. Sure. I'll absolutely. grab the ones we have. Absolutely. And guys, I, once again, will post how you be on my mailing list so that when you do have a question, especially for doctors also realize when it's a doctor, you have to ask within their specialty because yesterday we had a lot of hypothyroidism questions for Dr. Deal. He's not a medical doctor and tomorrow's doctor is a dermatologist. And Deborah Chen said, Dr. Greger said, no problem using microwaves. So oh, hey, there you go. And, and Jay Jitsu says microwave is still better than oil cooking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. There's yeah. Oil cooking is out. We're just going to make it the new trend. Just <laughs> no oil cooking. Um, so I have these Mia Rancho and that's just a Rancho. These are just the ones that I can get from Whole Foods. Um, I try to just look at the ingredient list and these are just water, organic white corn, organic yellow corn, masa flour, and a trace of lime. So there's nothing else in them. 
So I, I would just say, just check the labels, you know, because there are some brands that it's literally just corn and a little bit of lime which I wish I knew what that brand was because I used to buy them when we lived in New Zealand. They were amazing, but I have not been able to find them here. But a lot of the corn tortillas have, or they're, they're either a mix of corn and flour, and then they use all these stabilizers and all kinds of things. So you, I mean, I guess if you're eating tons and tons of them, I would be concerned and try to get a cleaner, less um, ingredient one. But if you're only having it like us, we have the tacos probably once every couple of weeks. We're not eating that many of them. So, you know, you kind of have to weigh like the things that you eat the most of those things, you should buy high quality, organic, whatever you can. I couldn't agree but with the you other more. things. I wouldn't worry about it. There's plenty of things to worry about. Jeffrey. I know, especially right now. There's a lot of other things to worry about, whether or not exactly. your, your, can't, your, your beans are organic. Do your best, bless the rest. Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. So do the lentil flatbreads uh, stay in the fridge? Can you store them there? And if so, how long? One second. Sorry, my, my battery. Uh-oh. Did she lose sound? Can you hear me, Jill? Jill, can you hear me? There. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, cool. Now we're on. That was Sorry. scary. Uh, so can, can you store the lentil flatbreads in the refrigerator? The question is, and if so, how long? Yep. I just put them in a Tupperware. Oops. I just put them in a Tupperware and they last. I mean, they don't last very long in our house. So I haven't had to store them for very long, but I would say a good week. They'll be just fine. And they do really well. I, I usually put them in a smaller package, maybe because there's four of us. I have to, you know, count how many I think we're going to use. And I put them in just freezer bags. They go in the freezer wonderfully, just like our corn tortillas. We keep all of that stuff in the freezer because, you know, they just last so much longer. And I don't have to worry about, oh, we need to eat those up quick because they're going bad. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Misty wants to know if you make your own plant milk. Uh, I don't anymore. Just because there's four of us, we're four grown adults in this house. So we go through a lot of plant milk. Um, I do have a good, a great oat milk recipe. We were doing that for quite a while. Um, but just as convenience goes, I try to buy um, the brands that just have like a Pacifica soy milk. It's only soybeans and water. Um, and there's also a, a, the almond milk, I believe is the same. It's just the almonds and water. We try to be more selective on the brands that have less ingredients and definitely no oil and no sugar. Right. Uh, Dina wants to know if you ever made quinoa bread. Yes. Yeah. I have a quinoa flatbread show too. You check oh. it out on the website. Um, but I, I make it in a big, on a cookie sheet. I just put parchment paper on the whole cookie sheet and I pour the batter out on it, on it like that. And then when it comes out, you just peel the parchment paper off of it and cut it into the shapes that you want. I've never tried it. I haven't tried it on the griddle like this. That recipe would probably work on the griddle, but yeah, I haven't tried it yet. So don't try it. <laughs> that sounds great. There's a question from Jesse. Are your daughters still whole food plant-based as they have grown up and gone more out on their own? I think she said everybody's at home now though. Yeah, we're, they're still with us um, at home. Um, my oldest daughter was supposed to be moving out, you know, in May, but, or this, this last May, but with everything that's going on, she's, she's staying put. Um, yeah, they've, they've had an interesting journey with that because they were in their early teens when they started. Um, kids, yeah, peer pressure was terrible for them. Kids would even shove things in their mouth because they thought they were missing out on it, you know, like just cookies and, and, you know, meat sandwiches and stuff like that. And yeah, they, they got criticized a lot for it, but now they've kind of surrounded themselves with um, more friends that are either plant-based or they're just really accepting of their, their different choices. So they're, they're doing great. They're probably, they're probably better at it than we are. <laughs> That's great. It's so great that you have the whole family on board. I hear from so many people where it's just, it's, it's a war practically. Yeah. Yeah. I get that a lot. A lot of people write to me and, and ask what they can do if they, you know, it's just them and their spouse and their kids are not on board. And I mean, just, I would say a great tip for people is just to make, you know, still make what you eat, 
and just have people try them or just add in one or two things that you know they're going to like. Find foods that they love and transform them a little bit. Just start experimenting a little bit. And as time goes, I found with many different families writing in, slowly their taste buds will change and they see how well you feel and how, you know, how your body is changing, how you're looking. It's infectious. Just, just be, be the teacher. Trying to, trying to get people to convert is really difficult. So just be the example I find works the best. That's great. So you said that before going whole food plant-based five years ago, you didn't even like to cook at all. So that's interesting because you, that was your first time cooking then. I mean, it, it's, it's sort of interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, that- I was, I was cooking, but it was just basic, basic things. And I really didn't cook well. I, I did. It's funny though. Cause I, my husband always would tease me about it. I never cooked meat. Well, I just didn't have the knack. I just didn't know what I was doing. It was either really dry or tough or so I just never cooked that much meat just naturally because I wasn't good at it. But we ate a lot of pasta, a lot of uh, enchiladas, pizza, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but when I started learning these different flavors and different ingredients and my taste buds changed, then I found that I just, I wanted to try everything. So it was more of an experiment for me. It was like a science project. And that's kind of, that's the fun part for me is the creating part. That's so cool. Uh, Shannon says, do you plan out your weekly meals? How much time do you spend cooking? No, I don't, I hardly plan at all. Just because we're, we're all here home and I work, we all work from home. So we're all here. Um, I would say the things that I do plan ahead, I always try to, you know, I cook a bunch of beans or chickpeas in my Instapot or instant pot and I freeze them in containers. So I always have cooked beans ready for anything. Um, Things that I make ahead, maybe I make bread, you know, my gluten-free bread, banana bread, those types of things. I like to kind of always have them in my weekly repertoire so that we always have that available for snacks or whatever. Um, But then when when I cook my meals, I try to cook double batches of things like if it's a stew or a curry, I try to make a larger batch and I separate out half and I freeze the other half so that I know that, you know, those days when you really don't want to cook or you're tired, that you can just pull it out of the freezer and, you know, thaw it out and cook it. You already have a meal made. I do the exact- and, I, and I have the benefit of having two young ladies and a husband that, you know, they don't mind cooking. So if I'm tired, I can just say, who wants to cook tonight? And they're more than happy. That's great. Beverly says, why do you eat a Brazil nut? It's a Brazil nut. You wrote Brazil butt, Beverly, but I'm sure you mean Brazil (laughs) nut a day. And I think she said she only eats one a week, actually. One a week. Yeah, it's the selenium. I think it's hard to get selenium from many other things in your diet. And they said Brazil nuts are a great source of selenium, but you only need one a week. That's all the selenium you need. That's cool. And let's see, there's a question about, do you ever use an air fryer? I tried a little bit in the beginning. A company did actually send me one um, because they wanted me to promo it, you know, but uh, I'm not a huge fan and I don't know why. I think because I'm here and I, I work from home. So I, I'm, uh, you know, I don't have to think that far ahead or I don't need meals to be super, super quick. Um, I've, d- I've just used it a little bit and I, I find it's, a, it's okay for just potatoes and things like that, but I haven't experimented a whole lot just because I feel like it's just another gigantic appliance on my <laughs> countertop <laughs> and we have so many already. So yeah, I think they're, I think they're good if you're, if you really like, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, a, it, you know what it me. is? I, I got to be honest. I lived most of my life without an air fryer. And then I had a little one. But once I got the Breville, it changed my life, Jill, because I live in near Palm Springs and it's over 100 almost every day. And when you turn wow. on a regular oven, the whole house gets hot. But when you turn on the Breville, it doesn't. And even though I paid for these beautiful brand new double ovens, all I use is my Breville. I use it for everything. Oh, it dehydrates, it roasts. So, but you know, but of course if, if it's like, if you don't have one, you don't know what you're missing, but it's sort of like the instant right. pop. I, I lived 50 years without an instant pop, but I can't now, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there with the Instapot. It's, it would probably be the, the same way if I used it more, I would probably find more, um, more uses for it. But I've, yeah, I've just been so trained to just, you know, put my stuff on a cookie sheet and stick it in the, in the oven. And it's about the same amount of time for me and, and the same amount of cleanup. So yeah, I think I'm just so used to doing that. And it's already in my, like, I'm in my groove when I'm getting ready to do things. I know I need to put that in first and, you know, I don't have to think about getting that appliance out to make something. Yeah, I know what you mean. You need a lot of counter space. Dina wants yeah. to know what your favorite salad dressing is. Oh, wow. Let's see. What's my favorite salad dressing? Got to think through the ones we have here. Probably either the ranch or the lemon tahini. Those are probably my two favorites. Or I really like the, um, I have a strawberry vinaigrette. That's really good too. Not many, not many people in the family like that one as much because they don't like the fruit um, salad dressings, but I, I kind of like it. Lori says, Jill, do you have specific Instant Pot recipes on your website? Yes, there's a playlist on our YouTube channel that has all of our Instant Pot stuff. There's probably 10, 10 recipes for the Instant Pot. Wow, that's terrific. Let's see, has your family, have your daughters helped other people uh, turn to a whole food plant-based diet, Monica wants to know? Yes, yeah. A lot of their, their little friends, like we have one girl um, that used to come over all the time and she wasn't plant-based, but she was really willing to try, you know, and she wouldn't complain about the food at all. She always tried everything we had. And uh, she, yeah, she just, all of a sudden, she came over one day and said, I'm plant-based. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm doing it all at home. And she does fantastic. It's great. It just, it just happened for her and the rest of her family is not. So that's, that's interesting. She's only, she's, how old is she now? How old is Jess? 19, but she lives at home with her younger sister and her mom and they're not plant-based. So she does a lot of the cooking and she's still, she's still doing it. So it's, that's great. That's terrific. Steph says, I love her shows. They are so on point with a plant-based lifestyle. And somebody said something about massage. Uh, Lulu's mom says, Jill introduced me to massage kale salad. She has a great recipe, huge fan yes. now. Thank you, Jill. And Jesse says, how much time do you and your husband spend on the YouTube channel, website, show preparation, et cetera? Wow. A lot. Yeah. I think that's, that's a constant conversation for us. We went through a little bit of a transition just this year with our channel because for the first probably four year, well, for the first three years, um, we'd been putting in so much time and putting out our weekly show. And then it was taking us a lot more time because, you know, we were just new. We didn't, we didn't know how to edit stuff. We didn't know, you know, we had to learn how to film and learn how to light and all of, all of these things that are involved. Um, so then it was probably taking us for one show. Sometimes it would take us, you know, 20 to 30 hours of work, like the setup, the cooking, the editing, the, all the stuff that goes along with getting a YouTube um, cooking show up. Cooking shows are a little bit different than a lot of people's channels. You know, they think YouTube is a simple thing, but when you add cooking to it, it's much more challenging. There's a lot more elements that you just don't think about. Um, but now we're, we've gotten pretty good, but we probably still put in, it's like a full-time job's worth of time every week. So yeah, well, that's why I like to go live. Hours. Yeah. That's why I like going <laughs> live. Cause I, yeah, I really, I really, um, respect the amount of work it does take to do even, you know, cooking demos, whether you film them or not, cause that's, you know, what I've been doing. So you do right. really, really great work. Do you, what did you do before? Uh, that's funny. I, I used to be a construction worker, actually, uh, for probably, oh gosh, I don't know, 10 years-ish, something like that. Um, in my, or, you know, from my teen years all the way up into my early 20s, right before I had my kids, when I, I got married and, and uh, got pregnant, and then I realized, yeah, you can't be doing that kind of work anymore. <laughs> so then I just, you know, I worked part-time here and there, and we uh, after having my first baby, I stayed home with my kids. So my husband was the primary breadwinner. 
but then I would go back and forth, you know, have a part-time job here and there. And um, yeah, so I, I, this is what I do now, but I still do all the landscaping stuff for myself, <laughs> home projects, DIY, all of that kind of stuff, just to keep myself happy. Nice. What well, do you have time for exercise? Oh yeah. 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 We, my husband and I walk, we have a very, um, uh, full of energy dog. So she gets walked three miles every day, uh, in the morning. And then I do yoga and some type of other calisthenics type of stuff on and off, but mainly just walking and yoga. Well, those are great. You know, everybody wants to know if, well, not just from you, but every guest we have, if you're currently watching anything either on TV or Netflix and have, if, have you have oh, time yeah. to read? If so, what are you reading? Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm a reader. I love reading. Actually, I, I just finished Fiber Fueled. You should, everybody should have this book. It is amazing. It's, I mean, I feel like I've read so many of the plant-based books out there and this, there was so much information in here that I, I hadn't even heard of. It's all about your gut health. Fantastic. And how, how important it is. And we really, over the years, we've just, um, kind of glazed over that part, just thinking all oh, plant-based is, as long as you're plant-based, you've got everything covered. But we were missing little things here and there. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Maybe that's why this, or that's why this. So that's, I would say, go ahead and get that book for sure. It's a wonderful read. Um, I, I love uh, memoirs, biographies, that kind of thing. Probably my favorite book, my favorite two books, is Swimming to Antarctica and Run by Dean Carnazes. My all-time favorite books. I love them. Wow. Nice. He's, he's, a, he's a distant ultra runner and she's a, uh, and the, the Swim to Antarctica is all about ocean swimming, like long distance ocean swimming. Watching anything on Netflix, I get. I was so surprised when I asked that question. Just the, the kind of things that Dr. Furman and Dr. Tom Campbell watched. It was just so interesting to see what their tastes. Oh were. yeah, let's see. What's what's our favorite shows on Netflix right now? Sorry, I have to consult with my husband. I I, I don't remember all this. Yeah, we're rewatching The Good Wife because that was such a great show, and The Good Fight. We love those two. Um, what's that? What's that car show? What's that guy? The Canadian guy. Rust Valley Restorers. He, it's hilarious. It's a, it's a, like a car and building show. Like they rebuild old cars and stuff. But the two guys that are on the show are just hilarious. They're just these grungy, like, oh, they're just funny. That's funny. Um, I just found a new show because in this time I need something that's not like too intense. And so my yes. friend Sharon McRae said, watch this show called Magic for Humans. And it's delightful. It's so magic funny. For humans. It's so good. If you like magic, it's magic and comedy. And it's just, you know, when you need an escape for like 22 minutes, it's really good. Really good. Oh, oh well, my own personal, I'm sorry. I glazed over this one because I love garden projects and, and you know, revamping my yard because I love to be outside in the yard. Garden Rescue. I love that show. Love that show so much. They're it. They're I think they're from Wales or something. They're in they're in, they're in the UK somewhere. So it's kind of a British uh, garden show, but I love that show. That sounds great. Well, J Jeline says you're amazing. She loves your recipes. Thank you. And Steph says, are you planning to do a live YouTube cooking show? I don't think so. I don't think we're gonna do live. I mean, we, we might just do once interspersed here and there, but uh, we, we really like the, the groove that we're in and we can edit out uh, that we can edit the show. If we did live, I think the shows would probably be just too long because some of our recipes get a little bit involved and, you know, the cooking process takes sometimes an hour and a half or something. So having a live show might be a little dry. <laughs> yeah. Lola Bean says she is so cute and real. I agree. And let's see the name of the book she was talking about. Well, I know she was talking about fiber fueled. Maybe they mean the name of the book that's your favorite book. Maybe repeat that one. Oh, uh, swim to, I think it's called Swimming to Antarctica. And the other one is called Run. Nice. Okay. What did you do in construction? They want to know. Because you, you weren't the, oh. were you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started out just being a laborer. We laid a lot of sod, scooped a lot of dirt, you know, so we, we landscaped the yards before sod would go down and then we would sod them. Um, I did some roofing. 
um, I didn't really do any, any uh, framing or anything like that, but then I got onto, I was a backhoe operator for the last few years. So I had my own crew, my own truck and trailer. And it was a lot of fun. I really do miss that work a lot. Wow. That is, that's, that's so interesting. So butterfly Neverlands says, why did you choose the word, word plant-based as opposed to vegan? Um, I, well, we followed Dr. Furman's plan first. So that was eat to live and he's very strict plant-based. Um, I don't think the word vegan even probably comes up in his book at all. Um, I think because vegan is very, a lot more broad, there's a lot of vegan junk food out there. Vegan, vegan still includes a lot of oil, processed foods and that kind of thing. Plant-based, you're really more focused on the whole plant food. There's very little processed food involved. There's, well, you can still use, there's still people that use oil in a plant-based diet, but our, our take on it is that oil is out um, because it's, it's, it's still a part extracted from the original vegetable. So we don't need that in our body. Nice. And I don't know who said it because it skipped, but how long were you in New Zealand? What were you doing there? Uh, we were there for four years. Um, I don't know. I, th I think at that time we moved, we moved there. We were kind of done with the U S we were kind of tired of the politics and tired of the, the game. And we thought we wanted to raise our kids a little bit more kind of on the land type type of thing, more natural. And, um, but my husband still had to work. He works from home, but we still had to be in the same, um, like timeline kind of. So we, we, we looked on the globe and we thought, okay, where could we move that would still, you would still be able to work and not have to work at night. Um, and that was one of the places and we did a lot of research and yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. So we just, we kind of just went for it. We just took our kids and moved there. That's good. I admire, oh, crazy. Your, I admire your adventurous spirit. Uh, All right. So we time for one more question. I'll just ask a fun okay. question. If you were on death row for a crime you didn't commit, but going to be executed, what would your last meal be? Oh, what would my last meal be? Oh gosh, that is so hard. P yeah. My husband's like pizza. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> It would be pizza. That's probably the thing that comes up in my mind the most. When can I have some pizza? <laughs> you really are. You really are very, you're really adorable. And I really mean that. And when oh, you're you out, please contact me. I'd love to do another show and, uh, and, and promote the book. And, and yeah, I, I, I you know, like, yeah. you're new to me. You know, you know it's so funny and, and don't people, people, I mean, everyone, I, I have a job and this is more my hobby, the YouTube. I really enjoy it. And so I don't really watch a lot of things on YouTube. I have like, I'm subscribed to Pluto, the dog, because he has like a three minute video <laughs> twice a week. And so when people say, Oh, you have to have her on or her on, it's like, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know them, but I really did you know, since you reached out to me, I watched some of your videos and looked at your website. Really, really very impressive. You're really oh, good. Thank you. The recipes thank are you. great. I mean, I would, I've printed a few out, so I'm very happy to meet you. And when your book comes out, I'd love to see it oh, and have you sure. on again. So because uh, some people here didn't know you and now they do. So they have a lot of great recipes. So Yay. yeah, well, that's so wonderful. That's so yeah. much fun. I love yeah. this. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't usually get to have this personable one-on-one. -on -one. I know. Well, you're a natural. And I, I know I understand that the cooking aspect of life is harder, but you're, you have no problem doing it. I can tell you. So you're, you're great. So oh, thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Thank you guys for watching. Please come back at 11 a.m. tomorrow when Dr. Jessica Krant, a board certified dermatologist from Manhattan, will be asked, answering your questions. And Jill, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, AJ. Okay. Take care.